Okay, how are we doing out there? First things first, my name is Kenneth Bird. I'm the creator of Supreme Ambient Light Rejection Screen Paint using Ambient Light Rejection Technology Gain. Trying to track down my camera stand, which I just clearly walked past. So, um, messing around with the, um, messing around, my light's on, I'm just telling my wife so dark on my point. Messing around with the uh, 1080p projector, sorry, 720p projector, my NEC uh, Ultra Short Throw, that's the one I got for around $59 on eBay. I decided to swap out my projectors. Now, last time I swapped it out for a 1080p, no, sorry, a 720p uh, Chrissy projector. And then I thought to myself, you know what? I'm going to swap it out for the um, 3600 lumen. This is an XGA projector, keep in mind, 720p ultra short throw, which is a downgrade from the 720p I used to have in here. So my 720p was WXGA where it was around 4,300 lumens. And then we had the big boy Christie over here, which is 4,300 lumens at around uh, full 1080p. So I'm getting rid of that. That's going, this is the one I'm gonna be using now for now on here. I like it much better because number two, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna walk, get up in the morning and bam, getting hit in the face with 4,300 lumens every single time. But I love the fact that I can expand this projector out. And mind you, this projector is only designed to do 100 inches. My screen is 126 inches. So people know that if you expand the image out on an ultra short throw, you're going to lose picture quality. All that stuff is going to deteriorate. That's something you have to worry about. When, that's something you don't have to worry about when it comes to our technology because it's designed to uh, maintain images in fully lit environments. So therefore, the picture is not going to deteriorate. So let's get this started. So I can show you how I'm going to be watching TV from now on. And I'll show you the arcade room, which I got the PC running upstairs. And keep in mind, it is a distance back. I had to pull it back a distance to fit the 126 inch screen fully. So I'm probably about a good, maybe two feet and a half away from the screen. At the most, we'll measure just to be sure. Now, keep in mind for you, those who think, oh, that's gotta be the blue technology. No, we have done this. I'll put some links at the bottom. I have done this on the Supreme 8 using the Optima GT5600. I was able to maintain a 160 inch screen in my basement, another 140 inch screen outside with 190 degree viewing angle around six o'clock in the evening. So we had taken ultra short those outside before and expanded the picture quality, the picture screens, the size of the screen um, beyond its, uh, its um, capabilities. So there's more than there's got a couple of things you can do with this technology besides, you know, get an amazing picture. You can actually enhance this picture size of your projector screen, actually projector. And as you can see, people are jumping toward the knockoff projectors because they'll give you the 150 inch screen, the big screen. Yeah. Let me go grab my control. I'm going to pop and pop into a bunch of commercials on here. There we go. So keep in mind, I work from a Chrissy, a Chrissy LW, I think it's an LW, yeah, LW uh, 400, which was an XGA to an XGA projector at 720p. And that's what I'm trying to explain to you when it comes to our technology. If I don't want to use 1080p, I don't have to use 1080p if I don't want to. I can basically just downgrade my projector and still get an amazing picture in a fully lit environment. And I'll show you how far my projector is actually sitting back from my screen. So I'm doing a bit of a long throw using an ultra short throw. That kind of rhymes. We can maintain images outside at 140 inches on an Ultima GT56. We sure enough can do it here with no problem inside. All right, so while you're checking that out, I'm going to be disconnecting my 1080p projector, which I'm no longer going to be using in here anymore because, well, what's the point? speaker cables are going to have to go back through the other way because now we're not going to have this in here anymore. Oh well. Put it this way. Let's see, where's the speaker cables at? What I want to do is since this does have, I'm going to have to take all the cables and wires and rerun them all the way around so I can hide them so they're not out in the open because this is just for the time being. 
And then I'm going to have to run, actually, since it has two HDMI ports in the back, I can run one with the Fire Stick and the other one with the PS4. So we'll run that today and take all the cable out, because now we're not going to go this cable in a shorter line now. Dale from just breaking a cup. All right. Just gonna shut my cup. I need this cup. My favorite drinking cup. Right, Sorry about that. I'm just getting cable and stuff out of the way. So I'm right now taking all my cables out. I don't need them anymore. Look at that. That is fantastic. Now that projector behind me cost me. Well, this one right here. Cost me 230 bucks. This one cost me $59. Where is, uh, let me see. I'm throwing a Chromecast to the back of that. This is going to go upstairs, back upstairs. I need any more. That's done. Oh, uh, where is the remote controls to the PS4? All right.
Nearly hit the power button putting in my speaker cables because my speaker cables already land right next to the power cable. Hit the power button, hit the wrong button. Ah, we'll put it back on. One thing I like about this projector, it has a fast shut off on it. So the projector has a fast shut off, which means instantly it shuts off and instantly it can cut right back on. That's what I like about it. I have to wait for it to power on. So I got a wire, take all that wire. Manage it all around here, tape it nice close to there, and bring it around the back. That's what I'm going to have to do. Because now, since I'm going to have everything this way, I don't have to have it back here. I mean, I'm just disconnecting a lot of this equipment that I have up here now. Because the projector's over here now. Okay. So I'm going to take my Chrissy and... Oh yeah, let me show you what's going upstairs in the gaming room. Wow, that's firing up. Let's go to the gaming room upstairs. I'm actually downloading a bigger file because I want to see if how it's going to play on the graphic card. Some of the games, like I said, oh shoot, better cobweb? Really? Seriously? God, please. All right, so some of the games are going to play in this mode and some are going to play in basically the, the portrait mode. So this is what I have so far. I'm testing out the graphic card right now. Now on some bigger games. So I made some changes to the pricing. Actually, I paid less. So when I added everything up, I paid somewhere around was four hundred and eleven dollars to put the whole for the whole setup, and that includes the keyboard and everything. So I'm just checking this out real quick right now. I'm on Steam checking this out, so I'll come back to this later. Uh, I just want to make sure to see if that file can load up and see how many game, kind of big games I can play on here. Um, see if the system basically has any difficult problems. So I'm going to exit over to my Steam right now. Just changed out my wallpaper. There's my wallpaper right here for the room. I'm just going to go with something a little crazier, but I decided to go with this. I'm going to bring the Steam back up. We don't, we don't need that. We don't need all that. We just need the Steam. That's all we need. Bring what I asked for. Oh, there we go. So okay, I'm going to my library. Got a couple of games I really like. This is actually one that does the whole entire screen. I was playing this earlier today. That fills out the whole screen. So some games will fill out the whole entire screen, which is kind of strange because the one game that I wanted the most to fill out the entire screen doesn't do it, which was the uh, Pac-Man, I mean, not Pac-Man, the um, Space Invaders, which I'm, I'm good I'm good over that. Like I said, I got a bunch of games I just downloaded today, games I can play in the full 106-inch uh, portrait mode. Now, right here in the corner, it's hitting, it's actually clipping some of the cabinet there. And it's not hitting high enough because it's supposed to be higher up. So I got to go downstairs, cut a piece of wood, and then fit it in there to lift the projector up just a little bit. And then use the position to bring it down with the keystone. And then I got it in place. But that's how it looks. I've hooked up the steam. And over here, I've got my keyboard and mouse. I got my subwoofer. Let me turn the lights on real quick. So I have my keyboard and mouse. I have my Xbox 360 controller. There is the PC right there on the floor right there. And there's my subwoofer. And I got to do some major wire management over there. I know I'm working on that today. Actually, I'm going to actually um, get me a nice little um, something to cover that over so I can slide back and forth. So I get to my cables and wires and manage that a little better. But other than that, a few more uh, um, LED lights to run in here. And then I'm done. That's it. This is my little little slice of heaven when I want to come in here and just don't want to be occupied by the bigger room. I like the bigger room, but it's a big, big room to be gaming in. And then over here, this is like I told you, I have portrait mode throughout the house, my door of the house. This is the screen I have in my 
office. Let's real quick, make sure you anything playing in the background. Okay, mode. It's one of I'm gonna bring the other projectors up too. This one. Now I'm I ordered some bio stickers. I got some glow in the dark paint. It's gonna work well with the UV. This is just an extra keyboard and mouse for work. Put that over here in the shop here. Everything over there so neat. And the beautiful thing about it is, I want to finish out the um, the cardboard um, uh, projection screen I'm building downstairs. I found some carbon uh, paper that I bought. I forgot I had it. I'm going to use this to trim out the sides so I can finish off my cardboard screen. I'm going to allow this to continue to play because I'm doing some more research on Chrissy projectors and I might be buying another one. So in here, we're gonna try to find it probably tomorrow. I'm gonna finish off this gamer room right here. Gotta rebuild that section over here because that had some problems, so I had to take that off and rebuild it again. I am going to buy me another ultra short throw for in this section right here, for this screen right here, so I can set it up. This one just for media, that's all gonna be done. A little bit more wire management over there because that's a bit of a spaghetti mess right there. And then I'm gonna finish um, circuit boarding the floor. So this is the only spot right here that I haven't finished off yet. And then I might do a little bit on the ceiling, just a little bit. I got a way I'm gonna display it where it looks like the circuit boards are actually dropping down and coming up. I might even go as far as actually adding a couple of cables or wires that look like they're disconnected from the circuit board and they're gonna have those glow in the dark. Make it look like there's a disconnection up there, have the wire flashing up there. So that's gonna have a separate power supply in connection by itself because I want the ceiling to be dedicated by itself. I want it to look like the ceiling's actually broken. So I'm gonna have some wires sparking a little bit. Do a little special effects on that. It's a huge cobweb that just hit me in the face. But this little section right here, this is gonna be another project right here. I am not gonna paint the ceiling black in there. But I am going to put LED lights at the top, put my gaming sign here, as I said before. Run my curtains right here. I'm gonna put snacks here. And I'm going to fill this area right here full of junk food, which I'm going to go to Amazon Pantry and drop like $200 worth of snack foods on there. Jacked up thing about it is I can't even eat half that food at a certain time of night because my acid reflux will kill me. But like I said, this is in there. Now, if you think this is interesting, wait till you see the blueprints I have for the new house. I'm actually in the process of purchasing. Yeah, it's going to be insane in there. This is just practice for me right now. When I move to the other house, we're gonna be doing things on a whole nother level. Yeah, a whole nother level. It's going to be, this is nothing compared to what I'm gonna be building next. All this is is practice. I gotta get me a keyboard desk for that right there. That's all practice. Because the next house I'm getting, I'm actually gonna have a 300 inch screen in my living room and I'm going to be buying two of the Dell's Ultra Sure Throw 4K laser projectors. I have a friend of mine, he's a whiz when it comes to screen mapping and comes to screen blending. He's gonna actually use a software to blend two Ultra Sure Throws together to make one large screen. Because the uh, um, that Dell only does up to 150 inch and I want two of them together, just for split this one. All right, so right now in here, we have swapped out my projector, as I said before. I'm using the Ultra Sure Throw XGA. Keep in mind the projectors I had in this area for the screen. First, we had the Chrissy, which is a 1080p 1920 by 1200 WXGA full 1080p projector. Then that one was actually removed out of here for a while for a black projector, which was a Chrissy 2 at 4,000 lumens, which was a WXGA projector. Um, that one now was removed, and this one was added in, which is an XGA, which means I downgraded my projector twice. This is an XGA projector at 720p, 3600 lumens. And as I said before, I know I don't like to use short throws because they sit too close to the screen, but look at the distance on where my short throw is sitting, which is good because he comes out of that radiator. And I can max out that projector. It's only supposed to do 100 inches. That's it. I got it maxed out at 126 inches, 69. Let me grab the controller. And I'm gonna keep it this way because I like the fact that you know I'm not getting up and walk in front of a projector. Now the one I got upstairs, I got it mounted up high, so I don't have to worry about it. But that one, I'm not gonna mount that projector anywhere near that door, anywhere like that. So I think it's the best way to go for in here. But until then, we got the short throw in there.
just to show you that I'm not losing it. Some people say, oh, you can't take an awful short though. You can't pull it back. You can't max it out. You don't lose your picture quality. It's going to deteriorate. You're not using our technology. We don't have that issue. I'm going to let this run. I got to go do some stuff around the house real quick. Ugh, I take this projector back upstairs and I got a reline table. about it the only projector i have downstairs it runs 1080p and i use that for mapping behind me the 10 sony vpl fa30 is what i'm using for my mapping uh projector mapping but right now that's 720p that short throw in there 720p the one up there hits the ceiling 720p that's the only 1080p in here and i use that for work this is for mapping not for doing anything well, we have viewing so few things but it remains for mapping all right put this upstairs said they all have that reje ambulate rejection technology i can walk through my house and all my screens can run without one of them washing out and fading this is my day every day when i get out i have to use ambulate controlled environment i don't have to make a difference if my projector is 720p or 4k i have options that's what you want options to be able to run your screens anytime you want to 
and not worrying about them washing and fading out. It's a beautiful thing, people, I'm telling you. Peace of mind. Don't worry about being trapped in the dark. This is the point I was trying to get across when I was talking about the ultra short throw projectors. People want them because they want that whole TV kind of style setup. That's what they want. What's the point of having a TV kind of style setup if you're worrying about your screen washing out or the window's going to wash out the image and all the other nonsense you have to go through? Like I said, I can take that projector, I can sit it next to my screen, I can use it like a TV, and I don't have to worry about the image ever washing or fading. And come down here in a fully lit environment. I don't have to go through that. People want to talk about how their screens are this, that, and the other. I can come back here and I can show you my screen all the way back here, and you will see that image pop up in a fully lit environment through three rows of lights. Because this technology is designed can be used outside. When you start doing your ambient light rejection test outside, inside is a cakewalk. It is. Most people, when they get a projector, the first thing they do is upgrade. I'm the very few people who downgrade a projector and still can maintain a beautiful image in a fully lit environment. Sure, dude had three of those projectors. He had three of them projectors for 50 to 60 bucks. Man, I could have put one here. I could have put one in the kitchen because I need another one for the kitchen. Could have put one in the gaming room. Man, let's save the one. It would been 180 bucks for like three projectors. Some of these screens I hear, they're not ultra short, they're compatible, so they will go dark on you. You gotta worry about that too. Is it ultra short, they're compatible? Sample sheet of an Elite Gray Cinema 5D. It is ultra short they're compatible, by the way. That's a very popular screen. If you had 126 inches of that screen, that's what it's going to look like on that projector. Exactly what you want to get. Black technology. Short throw projector, 720p. It's too much light in my environment. That's why the screen's having a problem.
But mind you, that screen at 100 inch, again, it's around $1,300, $1,400. This is a 126 inch screen. That's a 235.1 at 235.1 at 138 inches, right there. See the angle, you can see my screen clear across. The other screen, not even there. Let's go over here and let's have some fun with this right here. Oh, there's something now that's pulling up too. If I bounce into that real quick, that's what I wanted to see. Oh, I can maintain contrast levels. This is blue right there on the screen. It maintains contrast levels, even in a fully lit environment. And mind you, my projector is maxed out. It's not supposed to be at 100 inches. It's supposed to be at 100 inches, not at 126. So I've maxed out my pixel capability. I've stressed it out. And I have to deal with the ambient light next to the windows, even though we have any real window light coming in because it's cloudy outside today. It would have been nice if we had a little sun peeking through. That would have been nice. I forgot, I can stand it right here. Usually I'm used to standing it on the side because I have my projector behind me and it would hit my, my, my phone. But I keep forgetting, I don't have it right there anymore. I can just stick you guys right here, right up in the front now. There you go, this is much better. Like I said, anywhere I turn in my environment, I should be to see my screen at anywhere. That screen should always pick up. This is how I test them outside. And you can see how much ambient light my screen has contact with. See how it's all lighter on here? But from corner to corner, it stays black. Yeah, I want that little girl walking through the park. Let's hide that one right there. Oh, let's show the blues off. We gotta show the blues off. Show how incredible the blues come up on this thing. Or if the screen's being blue, but check that out. bird just flew in. Mm -hmm. You got people worrying about a little bit of ambient light pushing in. We can do this easily in here. That's why I say you have to work harder. When it comes to basically testing out a screen paint, those ambient light rejection tests, how I feel, this is how I feel. If you're going to be doing an ambient light rejection screen, they should be tested outside. They should be. If you test the screen outside, it's just going to be so much easier for it to be able to move inside the house with no problem. I'm going to go back a little bit here. Let's see those reds that pop up. Oh, you can show you what I'm going back and forth in between. Doesn't make a difference when I pull up, when I pull up. I'm so happy with this decision. I'm really happy that I went with the, went with the projector in here because now, like I said, it's a little bit more easier now. I got a lot more breathing room now because I don't have a projector slamming me in the face every time I walk by. And as I said before, I can't mount it because I got crown molding up there. You do not want to be messing around cracking crown molding around your ceiling. That stuff is expensive. So, um, and where it's at, you know, like I said, I can't lift it up any higher because I got my light switch there and my, my heater thermostat is there. So I can't lift it up. It's stuck there. But I need to pull it back that far because I need to be able to max out the screen size, which I need to fit this window. But having this projector here makes it so much easier. But again, someone's going to sit there and say to me, well, Ken, you know, your projector's sitting right up on top of the screen. No, my projector's sitting a distance from the screen. I had to pull it back to reach 126 inches. 
and it's maxed out on zoom. I can show you the zoom. It's literally maxed out on zoom. I had to pull it back and it still wasn't enough to pull the screen out. So I maxed it out on zoom. Let's go get some measuring tape. Man, if you had me for a neighbor, you would get free screens every day. You know what happens to those screens in the back when I get done with them? I throw them in the trash. And for, for those of you that say, oh, can you ship it to me? I, shipping a screen is extremely expensive. But, yeah, I just throw them in the trash because what else am I going to do with them? When I'm done with them. This is, I mean, they serve their purpose and I have nothing else to do with them. So I would like to get away. Actually, my neighbor next door, I gave him a screen and I gave uh, the one next to him a screen. I gave the people over there, I gave them a screen. Because I'm thinking like, man, I paid all this money for it. Might as well. And I was thinking about throwing it in the trash. And the neighbor asked me like, uh, what you doing with that? So I'm about to throw it in the trash. It works. I guess it does. And gave it to them. And their kids watch it on, and downstairs in our basement. Because I can't do anything else with them when I'm done. take out my Sony projector. This is my Sony projector in the kitchen. And I'm going to swap that out and buy another one of these projectors today. So Sony's going upstairs. Oh. That one. There we go. And still going to find out. This is my measuring tape. I want to see how far we are away. those because it's a little too easy of a demonstration but maxing out my projector's pixel capability makes it makes it makes it acceptable now at least the projector's working all right i'll figure out where i put that measuring tape out i'll figure it out somewhere around the house it's kind of bad habit of losing it So keep in mind, that screen is a kind of a light gray. It's a gray. It's about a gray screen. Actually, it's not a light gray because it's cinema gray. It's a gray screen. That's kind of a bit of a silverish kind of a gray. If any screen paint falls under that under that color, that's what it's going to look like if we paint it next to that screen on a sample sheet. I know, you know, I got a comment in one of my uh, streams that Mr. Crow came in and wanted to do a Frankenstein versus the blue. No, dude, you're not going to do it. <sighs> Good people don't learn. That's a great Cinema 5D. That's around the same color a Frankenstein would be. And that's what it looks like next to a blue that has technology of 15. And keep in mind, your personal mix sits in the dark on a 3000 lumen projector. That's far more advanced than mine. And I'm doing this on a 720p projector XGA in a fully lit environment. And still maintaining a beautiful picture and able to outperform a $1,400 projection screen with no problem. Without calibrating my projector at all. That's 
So I said, any companies that decide that they don't want to deal with the blue when we start testing out screens against the tech, they don't want to deal with it. Simply just send me an email saying, hey, look, I want a part of this and I'll remove it. I won't even show the email. I'm not going to show the email. That's between me and you. I'm not going to show the email. That's, that's personal. So you send me an email saying, hey, look, Ken, um, I would appreciate it if you would put my product next to that thing. Not a problem. Not going to talk about it. Never even happened. So I'm just giving people the opportunity. If you don't want to do a demonstration next to a 15, then is your option to back out of it. Don't back out of it. You're going to go against it. Now, my, like I said, that screen was able to outperform the UB, and the UB is the darkest mix this particular individual makes. So anything underneath that, it's not going to have a chance to go up against this screen. It can produce white levels in contrast at the same time as you're watching it do right now. We've done, it on, we've done this on ultra short throw. We've done this on long throw. We've done this on a thousand lumens. This screen has hit everything. But you have that opportunity. Right now, if Jamie sent me a message right now telling me that, hey, I don't want you to test my pain against this, no problem. I'm not going to tell anybody that we had this conversation. That's the end of it. Now, the only reason why I showed documentation on screen innovation when they came after us is because how they handled it. You know, they came at me in a, in a way of making me say, you have to be quiet about this. And that's why when my statute limitations were up, I was able to show those documents that we did have. Um, we did have a, a bit of a powwow with them, if you can call it that. If you can call it that. So that's the blue and that's the black. You can even see the water reflecting. And that's all 720p. Yeah, people can hate my work, but you gotta admit, it's good. It's good. I'm walking around my house right now with all my lights are on. I want to, I can sit up here and I can watch a game and watch a movie if I want. Let's see, let's go over to, uh, let's go to the football highlights. Since we uh, since we can uh, we can just come on in now a little closer because we don't have the projector standing behind the back of us. Let's remove this and get this out of the way. Back, y'all can come in here with me. And I can put it anywhere I want now. In fact, let me take it down there with me. Yeah. That's how close my lights are to my screen. Don't watch my screen in the next room. This is what you should see. When you buy screen paint, this is what you should be seeing. Five passes 
The 37 yards, they ran 14 plays and went 85 yards. See, when companies talk about being aiming like rejection, they should do this. Where is um put you guys here for a minute? I'm pretty sure you don't want to walk around me. Control right in there. Back of the end zone. Oh, it's back here, it's back here, it's back here, it's back here. It's back here. Let's get a dark demonstration in here. No, not a dark demonstration. It's just play a movie. So, a bunch of them yesterday. Oh, we'll do this one. your short throw you want to treat it like a TV you're supposed to treat it like a TV I shouldn't be darkening my windows or blocking up my windows or none of that nonsense I got a block window here because my screen size but I got two big windows on each side which I love because I get plenty of light that pushes in we're watching the news the sports whatever it may be I should be that screen Projection screen on the ceiling. The center light right in the middle of the fixture. Now you need to let me know how many companies or people that make screen paint are doing demonstrations on this level. This is what my customers get. And this is live, no fake, no special effects, none of that, no smoke and mirrors, real time. You all saw my hand snap at the same time, no delay. Which one is there? You know, bad no, no aliens, you just put them in just from being extinct. Okay, let's pop out of that real quick. Oh, I'm gonna do some gaming on this. I don't usually don't game too much on my screen, but I'm gonna do some game tonight on this. And I say that all the time, and I never get around to it. I got the arcade up there. I gotta go start messing around. Arcade has nothing on it but games. That's all it has on that thing. Let me see. Let's go to. Um... Mm -hmm. I'll grab that one. I like doing the dark demonstrations. Yep, when I leave from here, I'm getting two. No point in putting me. I got the room for 300 inch screen. I don't have the room here for 150 inch screen, but I'm getting two of them, yeah. My paperwork is finalized. That's when I buy it. Why are you so interested in when I'm buying my house? That's an odd question to ask. Oh, 
because you're curious. You ever heard the term about how curiosity did what to the cat? Okay, enough said then. I'm gonna let you go for you potentially get yourself in some trouble. Goodbye. People ask some of the strangest questions. You're gonna ask me, when am I buying my house? Like it's any of your business. Every video I've done, when I said I'm moving to another house, I've moved to another house. I've already upgraded in three houses. Within a two year span, so now I'm ready to move to something bigger because I've actually outgrown this house. I love this house, it's beautiful. I love the neighborhood. The neighbors are absolutely wonderful. But I've outgrown the house. I don't have enough room here to work. I would love to get a 300 inch screen in here. I don't got the room for it. I really don't. Where am I gonna put it? Can't put it in the basement, that's my workshop. And then out here, people are a little bit, they're a little bit interesting or colorful when it comes to setting up a 300 inch screen in your backyard. So when I make my screen, I have to make sure it hits the deck so no one can't see it. Because on the other side, it's a golf course and they really don't care. But if I set that monster up and we're away from my deck, then I'm gonna have everybody on this side saying, oh yeah, he's got this giant screen in the backyard. It's like, yeah, there you go, it's an eyesore. So I had a 96 inch out there and it wasn't that big. It was just sitting right there out in the field and I already had two people telling me tomorrow, well, the screen's too big. Don't bite me. That's why where I'm moving at right now is four acres on there. Nobody can't bother me with four acres. I can build whatever I want and be at peace of mind. And if this crazy projector turns out to be what it is, I'm going to be switching over and buying more of those monster projectors because I can go, I can get bigger screens out of them. Hear that? I love this. I love the fact that I can sit here in the morning and watch Tron with all the lights on. I love it. If you're gonna ask any questions about the screen paint, leave it at that. I gotta go in and do it. Someone said he wants me to do a tutorial on the, on the gaming PC upstairs. Like I said, it's beautiful, man. It's wireless, man. I freaking love it. Wireless. And keep in mind, I don't take all the credit for it. I can't take any credit for that. And I'll tell you why. Because I got the idea from a fellow who actually, that's how I found out how I can use that particular PC. Because I'm trying to figure out, okay, what kind of um, work office PCs can I turn into a gaming PC? And it's not going to cost me an arm and a leg. And I ran across this one fellow who was actually explaining, you know, you can use the, um, you can use a 10, 6, 10, um, sorry, the 1610, I mean, 1650 or, or 1050 uh, graphic card. And he explained everything. I was like, oh, wow, really cool. And then I went and got the information. And since I couldn't get the, uh, the 1650 because they're sold out, I went online and found out how many people benchmark the uh, the 1050, and it actually worked out fantastic. So, yeah, thank you so much because, man, that saved me a ton of freaking money on top of that, like I said. And, and I had the option to make it wireless, which is running upstairs completely, no wires at all, which I love so much. Oh yeah, had a poor start for a demonstration. So any screens that I stick up against that screen, while well, I suspend a start start for demonstration, keep in mind my projector right there doesn't have big contrast rating, but it has a ten thousand to one. stuff that I work on every single day you wouldn't believe me if I had told you weeks ago that I had a blue projection screen that I was working on you would never believe that if I told you I had color coding technology you would never believe that at all 
So, like I said, I don't expect people to believe anything I say. That's why I back everything up. Because they're not going to be able to believe if I tell them what I'm working on. Or maybe what I'm building that day. Or whatever God has to build that day. We'll take this one and put it here. This is a cinema grade 3D. This is a cinema grade 5D. Showing a Starfield demonstration. Oops, it went fell over. We gotta put that one right back up. I think somebody made a comment toward me, so I'll check that out in a few minutes. See what someone has something to say. Okay, blue technology. Ah, oh, you're missing the point. It's not the blue surface that makes the technology. Again, you don't watch my own demonstrations, do you? It's not the blue technology that makes the technology. It's called blue because the screen is blue, but that's not what it does to work. It's not blue. That's the part you don't get. See, when I was doing the black screens, like so, which is black technology you're seeing producing on the ceiling. And on the floor, how does a black screen have the ability to produce such amazing bright images? Because it has coding technology, which allows it to be able to read the projector. Now, I made the statement multiple times when it came to the black screen, but no one believed me. So, then we came out with the black silver, which is a gray screen that produces a contrast level higher than any gray screen, which I did that demonstration too. And if I take the gray screen and I lay it again to the black screen, the black screen can blend it with no problem, proving that the screen does have the ability to prove a higher white level. Now, still, you didn't believe me. So, this time, what I did was, I did two screens, one purple and one blue, showing that if you hit a blue screen with any kind of image, it all comes out tainted blue. It's the equivalent of looking at sunglasses when they're blue, everything comes out blue. But that technology has a coding in it that allows it to give the ability to be able to read color, even though the surface displays blue. And that's the part that most people mix. So since they didn't understand what I was trying to tell them, I thought it'd be better to basically shade the screen blue. It's the coding inside that does the work. That's why you have a blue screen that's portraying black when it's actually outperforming screens that are dark gray screens that have the ability to be able to pull up that particular color, but they can't. It has nothing to do with the surface. So that's the problem. People have to think outside the box. When you think outside the box, you go way beyond what thinking about how a projector works and everything. You have to think about how the projector projects the image and how the image hits the projector. It starts coming down to basically designing screens that can read. And if these screens could read, they would be displaying black right now. That's all it is. So that's why how blue got its got its uh its name. Because there was no way in the world I could explain to you over and over again that it's coding in the screen. But people can't see that when it comes to a black screen, they can't see when it comes to a gray screen. So what better than that than turn the screen blue and purple? And watch a purple screen produce a 100% white level. I told you if I had ambient light rejection technology gain that I could paint a screen to my ceiling and turn my lights on and my screens can still maintain an image. You wouldn't believe that unless you saw it. We all know that's a black projection screen, right? And this right here is a gray screen. So it has a black screen now. I have the capability to produce a white level high enough to blend into a screen that's gray. That's far lighter than it. 
because it can read code. It's code in the screen, allow it to be able to read white levels. And I've already proved the theory already when people say, what about black house paint? What about black spray paint? What about black fabric? If I am this thorough on my demonstrations on the work, the job, the work that I do when it comes to my technology, but you think I have tested everything I could possibly get my hands on. I have a drawer in the kitchen full of sample sheets of all high performance projection screens. I have tested these screens against all different forms of black paint, chalk paint you could possibly think of I could throw against it to see exactly what the reactions would be. The reason why you have to cover all those areas because I can have a company and say, well, Mr. Bird, I can give you this kind of money for 80 gallons of paint, but what makes the difference that I can go to Home Depot, and get some chalk paint, black paint, black fabric whatever and do the exact same thing you're doing in the video because I can show you my demonstration where my technology will pour a higher white level and those images will come out muddy and dirty you have to cover all your bases what's the distance throw I can get from a projector at they say 7,000 lumens I start laughing we have 7,000 lumens we do it at 20 feet back at 900 lumens what about ambient light rejection tests? I can show you demonstrations of 13 feet back on projectors outside uh, when using the smaller screens, and I can show you one at a projector at 21 feet back at 4,300 lumens, six o'clock in the evening, displaying Star Wars on a dark scene on a 180 inch screen. I got screens I have submerged under water. I got screens that I've actually folded up and soaked in water and, and frozen into blocks of ice that tear the screens open on camera to see to show that the format is designed to bleed into the surface. I've done multiple motorized screen, projector screens inside and outside the house, uh, house. I even did a screen and painted it on plexiglass and stuck it out in the middle of a snowstorm because I knew once it stuck out, put it out there, all that whiteness, all that brightness out there was gonna hit that screen and it was gonna cause 10 times more ambient light in a snowstorm you'll have in a regular sunny day on a spring day. Those are the kind of crazy stuff that I do when I do demonstrations. It's not just to prove that the technology is good, it's to prove to me that basically I am doing my job correctly. So I tell people, hey, before you buy from me, take the time, search the internet, find how many people are doing demonstrations on my level, and then you can come back to me. I don't buy expensive 4K and expensive projectors because I feel those projectors are making up for what the screens are lacking. I buy cheap projectors, the cheapest projectors I can get on, Am on Amazon, I'm sorry, on eBay. That projector in the room right there, you see it right there, that projector cost me $59. That's it. $59. That's all I paid for it. Meanwhile, you got companies out there. Charging you $3,000, $4,000 for a projection screen. If you want a white projection screen, you can buy one of them. You get that for four or $500 for a 100 inch. But if you want to go out and you want to um, spend the money for a more higher upgrade, then you're talking about for a light gray screen. What screen is that? Oh, that right there is blue. That right there is black. That's black silver right there. If you want to go out, you have to spend the money. So if you want to get a screen that has this kind of performance, you're talking about a couple thousand dollars easy. The price for that screen right there, because we consider that, um, let me see, what you say, no one what? No one, no, the one you just looked down. Which one looked down? Which one? I have a bunch of screens all over the house. You know what this screen is? The 100, um, 235.1, that's a silver ticket. You know what that screen is in the living room? That's an elite screen right there. Interesting that I can coat this screen and make this screen more advanced in their own technology. I told you, when you they're gonna give me that phone call. Like I'm not gonna really answer because I don't care, but they're gonna see, think about it. They got all those white cheap screens laying around they can convert it into this technology and charge you people, what, four or five grand easily for a screen. Because if you won't pay it, somebody will. Yep, somebody will. It's like if you go to a car dealership and you see a Bugatti, who are right in their freak minds paying that much money for a car. But if they're in business, that means somebody's buying it. If you're answering me questions about tests, you want to check the archives, buddy. The far left. Let's see. 
we had up there a, hmm, what do we have up on the screen? We had daylight screen. We had uh, the cinema gray and we had the gray, or cinema gray 5D. Didn't make a difference. Neither one showed a contrast level. Your point is irrelevant. Goodbye. I love when crow boys come up. I can read them a mile away. Doesn't make a difference what we had. I already showed you everything was up there. How can you ask what screens do we have up there if you just saw me displaying the screens? I always display the screens before I lay them up there. That's when they're going to ask some kind of idiotic question from the door. If you just saw me come up here, every time I do a demonstration, I always show you the samples that I display on the screen before I show them. And I tell you exactly how much each one costs for the price range of $100. I do this in every video when I do these demonstrations. So the fact that he could have rewinded and saw that, like I said, it's just crow boys. I got time for him today. I got things to do. That's why I said, you know, when you sit there and say that, hey, this product is so dark, I can't even see the screen. Well, if that's the case, then you wouldn't be able to see, you know, the gray screen that I have in my hand. You know, I'm walking around, I have this gray screen right here. And if it was so, if the technology was so, uh, was so dark, how is it blended into a gray screen? Let's do that one again. This is with the lights on. Mine, we're going to have the lights on. Let's put the lights on. That's where the lights off. If you want me to get up nice and close? I can do that for you with no problem. And you got a screen in the next room, which is actually doing an image at 126 inch max pixels maxed out. That projector is only designed to do 100 inches only. So we're way over the pixel count of maxing that out. Hmm. I'll show you something even more interesting. All right, so. Well, you have two other screen paints coming in, so I purchased two other screen. I ordered screen paint from a company called uh, HD Pro, HD Pro, no, no, Pro, no, no, Pro Screens USA, and I ordered another one from another company. So everybody doesn't feel that I'm singling this person out. Again, we have not been able to order this paint because we've been blocked, so you know it doesn't make a difference. I have the UV mix right here. So this is the UV mix right here. Turn the lights on. As I said before, you know he wanted me to send him a quarter of the blue. For a quarter of the Frankenstein, Blue's not even going to be out for a while, besides undergoing paperwork right now. Like I said, patent pending and all that cool stuff is going to be attached to it. But your Frankenstein is available now, which means I could buy that from you right now, but you refuse to sell it to me, and that's why the shopping cart is blocked. All right, so we have to make a difference. That the UB Mix and Personal Mixer anyway. I just wanted more of it. So let me show you this right here. Where's your screen? When he made that statement about basically our stuff being so dark next to his UV mix, yeah, that's a lie because I'm blending your screen right now on a black screen. Would you like me to get it close? There you go. Let's take this screen out of the equation and let's just keep the black screen up there. Kicks and giggles, I could throw you up on the ceiling. 
And that, that light handle has a lot of light. Hey, how you doing? 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 I'm happy I'm up to damn having a ball up here today. So I got the right one. Let me turn it up for Gotta start walking around both these sticks, man. Let's go to Walmart. That's not it. Oh, no, I think this is it right here. This is the one right here. Uh, when are you, where are you calling from? Are you, where's your, okay, what's on your ceiling? Spring black's on my ceiling. That's the same screen paint you see here. It's on the ceiling too. And that's the projector that's being used right there. That's my short throw uh, view side projector at 3,000 lumens being used for the ceiling. First thing he'll say is, well, my screen is the same as yours. Well, here's the thing. Because you think because a 12, you think you're blending a 12. Now, literally, when I show up colors and stuff, he'll think that, okay, well, my screen's blending yours. No, you're, not, you're missing the point here. You're not equal to a 12. If you're equal to a 12, you could pull a contrast level like a 12. And you can't pull a contrast level like a 12. Not even with the lights partially out, you can't pull it. Because that screen's 100% black. And because it's 100% black, and it's basically allowing it to be able to pull a color that's so high that it's blending into your screen, making it disappear, and then pulling a contrast level where your screen can reappear. Nah, I ain't got time for that, but I can make you disappear. Goodbye. All right, let's move on. So let's go back here and let's pull the Starfield demonstration. And we, have, we don't have the lights on yet. Let's throw our lights on. So that's the thing. The UP Mix, any other gray screen, whether it be um, the Dark Star 9, which we have right here. We have the Dark Star 9. I told you, anytime I show a sandwich, it always show the screen right there. We got a Dark Star 9. It's the $3,000 screen at 100 inches. There we go. I see, that's the part. I mean, you know, companies or if companies saw and say, hey, look, well, wait a minute. Our screen matched your screen when it came to color and everything. So it's the same thing. No, it's not. Because all we have to do is just basically just go in and switch over to contrast and your screen basically falls automatically from the door. So keep in mind, as I'm explaining this to Crow, if uh, UV mix, which is your darkness screen paint, basically falls when we show a black level and we can blend into it on a high color level, what chance do you think a Frankenstein would have over here? If we throw a contrast level against that, that screen is going to be gone. It's going to wash quick. I have your personal mix. Now, like I said, there's two other companies right now I bought from. One guy, uh, he's had he makes uh, two different forms of screen paint. One's the Pro Screen. They're, they look exactly the same as this right here. That's what they look like. When they come here, we're going to do a side by side to see how close they come. Now, keep in mind, like I said, if you're in the field to buy that kind of screen paint, I wouldn't, but it's up to you. You know what I mean? Because I'm sure what you're going to get out of it. Uh, there's a better way of going about doing it and save a lot more money because it cost me $42 to get two quarts from this fellow and it cost me $9 for shipping, $9.90 for shipping where if I had purchased from Crow, if he allowed us to get access to the shopping cart, which he won't, I would have paid $75 for one quart and $23.10 for shipping. The other fellow I bought from, I bought a quart from him, cost me $29. Now, 
Some people say, well, we can go with them instead of going with you. Oh, knock yourself out. Please do. Because if you do that, I'm going to show you what's going to happen with these high power projectors and even with a 7,000 Lumen Christie projector, what will happen to your screen versus our technology versus everybody else. Oh, that's why 7,000 units coming in too on top of that. Because, you know, I'll just put this another way. But just bottom line is, yeah, you'll see what you're getting. Uh, let me see. But like I said, I don't put these other two companies down. I don't. I'm just showing you our comparison to them. I have enough confidence in my technology to display and promote someone's out screen paint, which I plan to do. For people who are basically looking for a very low, low budget, and that's what you want, something where, you know, it doesn't really, you know, I'm not saying this will make a difference, but like I said, compared to what we make. But I would promote those two. I would actually link them on my website. Because at least they're being honest enough front. When they put their advertising in, they're talking about their product, they're being honest enough front. Let me get some more This is the Crow's personal mix right here. That is his personal mix right there. That's what we have left of it. Now, if he sits there and says, well, and I've heard the excuses from him. I've heard, um, we don't do business with scammers. That's what he said. It's funny because we did two transactions from us, which means he took money from us twice. And we can show that because if we go to the PayPal uh, the PayPal account, the eBay account, Anytime you buy from a particular merchant, it will show that you have actually bought from that merchant already before by having a green little tag at the top that says you have purchased from this merchant merchant before. We've purchased from him twice. There's no excuse why he's doing this. Everybody else we're able to order from. Yesterday I was able to order from everybody. I got samples coming from everybody. He's the only person that blocked this. We were not allowed to paint the land here. Must be something they've got something to hide. Ironic, isn't it? Try to get this a little bit better. It'll pull the white levels. Any other, any gray screen, a light gray screen? Like, all right. It's a very light gray screen by Cinema Gray. Very light gray, as you can see. It's almost very close, as you can see right there. It's a very light gray screen. Any light gray screen is going to always pull a high white level. I mean, it's just basic. I hate to say the root here, but it's just take basic common sense. If you've got a screen that basically is very light, it's going to pick up a lighter color, and the screen is going to be dark. It's going to pick up a darker color. But with our technology, it allows the video to blend into lighter colors. But some screens are just going to have a higher white level. So we go into, uh, let me see if this is the right one, because I keep getting my controls mixed up. So some marking things off days ago. I never got around to it. All right. Oh, we got to put some tape behind that one. That one's going to keep coming down. Uh, let me grab some more tape for that. Meanwhile, as we're having this conversation here, the sun is coming up right now on my other screen, sitting in a bay of windows. And that's not having one problem at all over there by itself. And then, to make matters even interesting, we have a screen sitting on top of the ceiling, right in the middle of the light fixture. That's producing an image with no problem whatsoever. Why we're all doing this at the same time. I got the wrong way. See? they will lean heavily on those colors because that's what's going to sell the product. Everybody's just having a bad desk crow again. Okay. Everybody, like I said, and even if you have it, I'll show you the darkest one we have up here is a UV mix. It's still not producing 100% contrast level. So what you're pretty much just getting in the dark is just shades of gray. Back here. That's my mix. There you go. I like to show these off so you can see for yourself. It is his. We got this sent to us way back, I think about a year ago. He sent this. That's his signature right there. That's his product. I told you we have this product here. We have some of it here, 
Um, we did make two orders from him. I ordered that one and I got another one. I actually ordered something else and he gave me that one instead. Called himself doing me dirty and it ended up backfiring to him right now. All right, so. Make sure we got the right one. Get these controls mixed up. There we go. And let's go over to. Now keep in mind, in, our dem in his demonstrations, our screens are literally supposed to be so dark that you can't see anything at all. That's how dark. It's supposed to be so dark. So we'll see how dark our screens come up. There is Crow's personal mix here. There's his Yuppie mix. That is a cinema, it's a, um, a Dark Star 9, which is a darker screen next to his. And that right there is the Cinema Gray. And then you have our black technology. And this is with the lights on we're running right now on a black screen. So our image was so dark you couldn't see it. You can see the screen with no problem. And he completely, you know, he completely missed the entire, he just sat there and said that UB Mix looks pretty good. You don't get it, do you? You don't get it. It's contrast is everything. That's the part you don't get. You got a black screen that's blending into a screen that our screen, I keep in mind, this is the part he misses. He misses, oh, the UB Mix looks pretty dark. That is to keep up with the UB Mix, but yet I'm blending into that screen, but no problem. My screen is the underdog because it's darker. You don't get that point, do you now? Now you understand? My screen's the underdog. It's a dark black screen. So black screens aren't supposed to be able to produce white levels. We're not supposed to be able to produce bright colors. But yet all these gray screens we have up here, my technology is just sitting right by them. And you can see the image is crystal clear in my image with no problem whatsoever. But if I were to put this on a contrast demonstration, then what? Where would they stand at? If I were to do Batman right now. Wait, wait, what do you say? Hold on, hold on, hold on. We said, no, the UV mix under underdog because it's way cheaper. All right, this is where you need to do your math, Kenneth. Let me explain something to you. First things first, if you go on the Crow's site, he charges $75. $75 for a can of paint. By the time he charges shipping onto that, which you will pay for that, that will cost you around $93.10. We got our black or gray screen paint, which is actually can blend his screen with no problem and produce a contrast that can beat a $3,000 projection screen, cost $89, and the shipping's free. And on top of that, keep in mind, contrast screens, two black contrast screens, cost an arm and leg. Our demonstrations are unmatched. You show me one demonstration, any one of our challenges that have been matched under our technology that we have put out. Name one. You ever do that demonstration on an ultra short though projector? No, you haven't, have you? All right then. And guess what? It doesn't sit in the same category as that, and that where you're going to get what you pay for. It doesn't do demonstrations in an environment with that much light. It's cheaper. Hey, yeah, it's cheaper, all right. So tell me where the problem is here. Our screen is blending in, showing a perfect image. No problem whatsoever. You can read everything crystal clear. Look at it. And you see everything beautifully on our black screens. Faded to the red. All in faded to red. Now we have a Starfield demonstration. Where's the improvement? I'm asking you a question. Where's the improvement? Oh, the set. Wait, wait. It's not that. The bigger sample sheet on the UP mix. Uh, my buddy, let me tell you something. That's his personal mix right there. Look at the size of that sample sheet right there. If you have to keep in mind, these are official certified sample sheets right here. See the size of them? Crow's screens are larger than these certified sizes that they give you when you actually get a screen from, when you get a screen from a company. So guess what? Goodbye. Your argument means nothing. 
that's a crow boy coming in and complaining. He's saying that the crow's paint is being done unfair due to the fact that his sample sheets aren't big enough. Well, let's put it this way. If he would unlock his shopping cart and allow us to go in and buy his paint right now, I would do half of a screen in his coating and half of a screen in our black technology. But his shopping cart's locked because he won't let us to buy from us. So clearly he has something to hide. That's all he has to do. Open that shopping cart. And I'll buy right now from him today. So he explained to me why we can't buy from him, but he can buy from us. All right. I thought so. Let me see. Let's go here. Simple and clean. All you had to do, where our technology can blend in the other screens, but no problem. Actually, Crow's UP Mix, we just blended that screen a few minutes ago. But if I show you Starfield demonstration, that screen completely washes out. It's gone. You can actually see it pop up. Let's go to, um, let's try uh, the black contrast test. The background, this is an OLED demonstration, which means the background is supposed to be pitch black when you see an OLED demonstration. When you watch an OLED demonstration off an OLED screen, it doesn't come up gray, it doesn't come up white, it comes up jet black. Our screen is displaying this in a fully lit environment. Not even the $9,000 projection screen is going it. Now, where is that comment again about the UP mix being uh, equal to our technology? And there you go. Oh, and uh, by the way, ambient light rejection. That's our black technology sitting on a ceiling. Like I said, right in the middle of a light fixture. There's no ambient light control going on in there at all, period. Right in the middle of a light fixture. Ambient light, that's an ambient light rejection technology. That's what it's supposed to look like. Let's get this off my screen. And that's a 15 in there. As a matter of fact, I got a challenge for him right now. I'm going to pull a Starfield demonstration on that screen right now. This is what I want to see. My projector sits back farther than his. As you can see, this is the distance though of my projector. See how far it sits back? You see my windows on each side, I got windows wrapped around my screen. These are veneer curtains, which means I can see out, but they can't see in. This is how much light pushes through my curtains. You see my ceiling lamp right here? I don't have one lamp in there. I got five in there. And they're right next to my screen, that close. My lights sit the same height as my screen. You see how well lit my environment is? You can see all the corners, everything crystal clear, everything nice and bright. With no problem whatsoever. So, challenge I have here is that... I want to see a demonstration by today, ultra short throw to ultra short throw, and I want to see that demonstration on your personal mix on a 100% contrast demonstration. PS4 yet? Are you kidding me? Why don't I buy PS4? What I want to buy, brick? No, I'm good. You, you, have you watched? No, I forget it, forget it. If you haven't seen anything by now, it's no point in explaining it to you. All right, let's move on. If you haven't, if you haven't seen the problems that those systems are having now, yeah. Oh, sure, yeah, I want to spend money on a brick. I'm good. I had a gaming PC upstairs and I'm running on right now. It's more powerful than the Xbox and the PS5 combined. And you want to talk about bricks. I'm good. And you have both. Yeah, but here's the thing, buddy. My PC is still more powerful than your, in your console system. I have two. I have, put this way, I have a minimum on my system right now of two terabytes. And you have, what, 625 at most at a game that's probably 
doing something like 125 gigs, yeah, you'll be maxing out like less than 10 games. I don't have time to have that conversation. It's not about gaming today. All right, so here's the challenge. Let's bring up the Starfield demonstration. And this is what I want to see today. By today, end of 12 o'clock, I want to see a Starfield demonstration on that personal mix. Now, since you want to challenge uh, Blue, and he made the statement about wanting to go against a Blue, you can take your screen and do the exact same thing a Blue's doing. Produce a black contrast level on an ultra short though in a fully lit environment. Of course, you can't do these because you don't have windows next to your screen. Oh, wait, you do have one. You have one in air conditioner sticking in the window. That's what I thought about. You do have a window next to your screen. You have one with an air conditioner. Can you roll that window up? Like, I have an air conditioner right here. Can you roll that window all the way up next to that screen? And then the two windows in the back, if you could roll those up, that'd be nice. Put that in a fully lit environment and show me a Starfield demonstration by the end of the day. See? Fully lit environment, Crow. This is how it's done, Jamie. See every last corner is exposed. And I can show you that screen right there on black technology. I can show it to you on blue technology. I can display anywhere I want in this environment, my technology will pick up. So that's what I want to see from you. I want to see you do it on an Optima P1, and I want to see it in a fully lit environment. I want you to display a Starfield demonstration. By 12, before 12 o'clock tonight. And it's just like any company. If I'm going against any big company, I'm going to tell them the same thing too. Oh, okay. You want to brag about your technology? How about this? How about you take a 720p projector and you do that demonstration and see if it does the exact same thing of giving you the same high quality picture, even close to it, than what you would have with the projector you use now because I do it all the time. I'll take a 720p projector that's 600 by 800 res, 720p and I'll put that against a projector that a matter of fact I did that I did it against a Christie projector on 135 upstairs you got a WXGA 1920 by 1200 4300 lumen projector next to a projector that's 600 by 800 720p SVGA and you couldn't tell one from the other now any big company out there I challenge you to do that demonstration they're not going to do it. This ultimate screen challenge, when we went outside with 1100 lumen projector and pulled it back, I challenged every company to do that demonstration. There's not one link underneath that video. Everybody wants to ridicule my stuff, but they don't want to do any of our demonstrations. So if your stuff is so good, do the demonstration. By 12 o'clock, it should be done already. Fully lit environment. I want to see all the corners, everything well lit in that environment. I don't want to see a little light pepper here and a little light pepper here and the door open up in the back. I want this whole area illuminated. Maybe that's not clear enough. Sometimes that's not clear enough. Sometimes that's never clear. But this is what we're doing. Maybe my curtains are too dark. Maybe that's the problem. My curtains are too dark in the environment. So let's fix that problem. So my curtains right now, just a little too dark. I don't think they're bringing in enough light. My screen, or big, my screen's bigger than my windows. If you see where my screen sits in, it doesn't sit tucked into the wall. My windows, when they expand out, light hits here and light hits here. That's why you're seeing a reflection of my um, my um, my um, my lamp reflecting off my screen. That's how much light is making contact with my screen. So if you're as good as us or any other company as good as us, they can do the exact same demonstrations. It does irk me a bit when I have people who sit there and want to make comments about being as, as on our level when they're not on our level because they don't do what we do. Oh, 
So we're done here on this one. Let's go take a hop upstairs. That's gotta go upstairs. Forgot that. that has to go upstairs. I'm done with that. I'm gonna let that run right there. Oh, and by the way, I know you have the personal mix on your wall, so let me give you a bit of a prelude. What happens when you take a light gray screen, you stick it against the screen that's designed to uh, mimic black. That's why it's not gonna do that demonstration. But 12 o'clock, we're having to end of 12 o'clock today to do the demonstration. I'm giving you three demonstrations. I give you one for a projector swap out. I agree to show nothing but white levels on my screen while you show contrast, which you did not do. This is my office area. You have to have a lot of confidence in your product to do a demonstration by exposing your screens to tons of window light. And the reason why I can do this with ease, with no problem, with no worries, let me get this up, put my stand up here, is because I test, my ambient light rejection tests are done outside. Anytime you test a screen outside, and if it passes that test, inside is a cakewalk. But everybody, when they test their ambient light rejection, I'm gonna call it what it is. And big companies out there, I don't care if they don't like it or not. Your ambient light rejection technology is fake, and that's how I see it. I'm gonna tell you how I feel, it's fake. I get sick and tired of coming on here, people claiming they have ambient light projection technology. And the first thing I see is these little uh, peppered out environments with little bits of light peppered out in the environment, all rehearsed, whole entire environments rehearsed to make the screen look amazing. But you never do demonstrations on this level. And you got a nerve to put ambient light projection technology next to your product. I had a friend I was talking to about that, and he was talking about that too. That this ambient light projection technology is now pretty much getting to the point where it's worthless. Because people are doing so many cheap demonstrations off of it. It's not being appraised where it's, where it's meant to be done. That's what bothers me. Because now anything, because it has a little bit of light in the environment, that's ambient light projection. No, that's crap. I wonder what my electric bill is, isn't it? It's pretty high. Electric bill is a bit expensive. I run more, but I don't run all the projectors at the same time through the house, but I do run quite a bit of them. That's the Chrissy firing up. Let me get this one to boot. Lazy booting. There we go. We'll take a look at this one while the other ones are firing up. I'll put you on there for a minute so you can see. My screen display.
135 inch screen. My projector sits about 14 feet from my screen. This is the black technology one I showed you downstairs with a projector of 3400 lumen short throw. Same screen downstairs technology that was used on a thousand lumen projector at 11 feet back, which was on a challenge that was never met, displaying only white levels only. You notice every curtain I have in this house is designed so light can push through the windows. And you can see all the corners. Everything is nice and bright. This is what you're supposed to be looking at when it comes to ambient light projection technology. This area is supposed to be well lit. And anywhere I stand, if I'm walking out of this hallway, I should still be able to see that screen. When I come in my office to work, I should be able to turn all my lights on and I should be able to see my screen. Everything should pop right off that screen with no problem. This is my work screen. I come here and I work every single day. I have to be able to see, I have to have a screen that's going to have the ability to be able to push a white level off a surface that's black and be able to read it with no problem. I put down, uh, let me see, Chrissy LX 700, that's what I'm actually looking at right now. See that? Because if that screen was too dark, I couldn't read that text. And change my walk doesn't make a difference. Screen's gonna pull up no matter how much light hits it, doesn't make a difference. This is what you're supposed to have in Amy Light Rejection. I should be able to walk through my house and be able to fire up any projector in my house and it should operate with no problem whatsoever. That screen should react to light in the environment. Nothing in my house is dark. Your technology's not doing the same? Well, but you need to improve your screen. That's what you need to do. You need to get a better screen. Let me go fire my projectors up right now. So I'm gonna watch what I wanna watch today. Oh, let me see, uh, PS4. Let's go back into the dashboard that. In fact, let's come out of that one. And let's put up, uh, Anywhere I walk, that screen is supposed to pull up. Even the one on the ceiling is supposed to pull up. So if I'm walking around my house right now, anywhere I move at in this environment, you're supposed to see that screen. 
This is how I test my technology. When I'm outside and I'm doing ambient light rejection tests, I should be able to walk around that screen and that screen should pull up. You should be able to see my screen here and here at the same time. Let's brighten it up a bit in here. I think it's too dark. I don't like to use this light too much, but for this demonstration, I'll make that sacrifice. We'll go in here first. Come through my kitchen. This is me every day when I get up in the morning. And then I walk and stroll through here. You should be able to see my screen. I turn around. I look up and take a look at the ceiling sometimes. The screen over here. All corners exposed. I don't use the light too much as a short in it, but. Take a walk upstairs. This is me back and forth in the house all day. Going from upstairs to downstairs to do this, to do that. And anywhere I move it in this house. When I walk by a room, that screen should be activated. Look at the angle gain on my screen here, right next to a window. Going into my office. I should be to see that screen with no problem. All right, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed the demonstration. Just showing you what it should look like if you have real ambient light rejection technology. Like I said, I watch these videos all day long. Well, not all day long, but when people are trying to say they have ambient light rejection, it's not even close. It's not even close. It should be, if you're paying that kind of money for a screen, or if you're basically buying that kind of screen paint, you should be able to see your demonstrations like this. If you're not doing demonstrations on this, it ain't worth your time. Like I said, you don't, you don't want to buy from me? Do your research. You don't got to buy from me right away. Do your research. Try to match anyone who's doing the same thing I'm doing. And then when you're ready, you get back with me, and I'll set you up with a beautiful screen. You can watch with your lights on instead of sitting there in the dark trying to figure out where your coffee table's at. And most people want to go, they want the ultra short throw projectors. And the first thing I hear from people is, I want an ultra short throw projector. I don't want to deal with the wires. I don't want to deal with the cables. I want to have a screen that's going to react like a TV. That's what they want. What point is there having a ultra short throw projector if your colors are going to be washing out half the time because your light's on in the environment or you have window light coming in? What's the point of having it? Might as well go buy a TV. All right, better go and God bless.